Hi, I'm Roberta Green in interview with Jean Reynolds, uh, Tuesday, September 2nd, 2014 in Huntsville, Ontario. Hi, Jean. Hi. Could we start with some identification of your, your name, your maiden name, your year of birth and your birthplace? My name is Jean Ellen Reynolds. My maiden name was Davis. And I was born on June 28th, 1928, my parents' wedding anniversary. And my father's name was Sidney Robert Davis, born in Severn Bridge. And my mother's name was Hazel Woodbury Batram, born in Hamilton, Ontario. And I had one uh, brother who was actually born in Aurelia Hospital. Why the Aurelia Hospital? Well, my mother wasn't well after I was born. And of course, I was born at home because there was no hospital here. I was actually born at 17 Dufferin Street South, up near the Reservoir Hill. Up at the top there? Up at the top, yes. Yes. So um, they chose to have my brother delivered in Aurelia at the hospital. When you were delivered, did the doctor come to the house? Yes, Dr. Evans. Okay. And there was a nurse too, but and I, well, I can't think what her name was. So. But a team of them come to help, that's good. Absolutely, yes. And um, we lived there for quite a number of years. And my father owned quite a bit. Well, he didn't own it. He rented the property from George Wilgris, who had built the house originally. And um, the property ran from the Reservoir Hill right down to Mary Street. And my father gardened that whole thing oh my with help, of course. Oh, what beautiful, a lot of work. Beautiful gardens. Oh. And um, in the right time of the year, of course, he would tap the trees. And, uh, and that's we, right in town. Absolutely, yes. Oh. Wonderful. We had two other buildings on the property. One was a chicken house, <laughs> and that was my job to feed the chickens. And every time I went in, the rooster would attack me. Anyway, um, we survived. <laughs> the other was an ice house, oh, yes. and in the basement there were large chunks of ice stored that the men acquired down on Hunter's Bay. They would cut the blocks and put them on a sleigh and draw them up with horses to our house. And then they were covered with sawdust so that you could retain, you know, anything that required cooling because we didn't have an electric refrigerator then it was only an ice box. Yes. And upstairs in that house was our playhouse, where my friends and I had a great time. <laughs> was it cold because of the ice it in the bottom? It was a bit cool, yeah. yes. But you probably didn't care. <laughs> no, no, we had a great time. And um, in the winter, my father would rent a sleigh and take the children in the neighborhood out for a sleigh ride driven or drawn by a horse. Oh. Anyway, where would you go? Where where would he take you? Um, mostly up around the reservoir hill section. And that was a great place for the um, children. A great attraction. Because mm -hmm. my longtime girlfriend Doris Draper, who lived on Mary Street just below us. She and I would go hiking up there in the warm weather, of course, uh, to pick wild flowers. 
and green apples. And on the way back, we would eat the green apples. And we couldn't understand when we got home why we had terrible pain in our stomachs. Oh. But later on, we learned the source of the problem. Do you think those trees are still there? Those uh, apple trees? I wouldn't be surprised because mm -hmm. it was right in the dense part of the bush. Yeah. And of course, a lot of the boys in the neighborhood loved to swim in the reservoir. But if they got caught, that was really bad. How did they get in? I'm not sure. Did you ever do that? No. No, I, the girls never tried it that I'm aware of. It was always the boys. <laughs> anyway, lots going on in the neighborhood. It was just like a big family. You know, there was um, Jim Necklin. He worked for Bethune Lumber Company as well as my father did. And then the Cooper family, they owned the theater in town at that time. Is that the theater that Joskies owned later? Yes, okay. yes, later. All right. And then there was um, the Bagley family. And they originally came from Severn Bridge. And they would take our family, because we never had a car, they took our family back to Severn Bridge to visit our grandparents, oh. which was just wonderful. Yes. And then the Armstrong family was close by too, and they were they had um, a butcher shop on Main Street, and they were very active in figure skating. I ran into them in the carnivals. Because skating was one of your interests, Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would walk from the Reservoir Hill, where our house was, right over to the skating rink, which was over now where Summit Center is. Okay, yes. That's quite a walk. It is. And uh, in those carnivals, um, there were a number of well-known families. Um, it was Harry Hearn. Um, Luke Hawkins, oh yes, Hattie Briggs, oh. and Pat Appleyard, oh. plus the Armstrongs, and Pat Appleyard and I were among the youngest, very much younger than the rest of the group. So we always had a room to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We never knew what went on with the rest of them. <laughs> and uh, then there was the Trussler. I'm getting back to the neighborhood now. Good. There uh, was the Trussler family, and they had a boarding house, and some of the teachers boarded there. Oh. Um, Morris Pierce, Sandy Ness, and a Mr. Fowler, and they would come out in the evening and play baseball with oh. the children in the neighborhood. Lovely. Another boarder there was Fred Burns, the shoemaker. Yes, we had a great time. And um, you knew your neighbors well. Pardon? You knew your neighbors well. Oh, we did, yes. Mm -hmm. We uh, intermingled a lot. Oh, and behind us there was the Howell family, and I took piano lessons from Fern Howell. And, um... You did more than just piano lessons, too, oh, yes. though. You did dancing, I yes, believe. Yes, I took ballet and um, tap dancing. And I took figure skating. And Doris, my friend, the two of us learned to ride bicycles. And did hopscotch on the sidewalk. Oh. Lovely. And also, um, oh, there was something else. Well, the hiking, of course. And um, 
oh, we like to um, recite poetry. And we had autograph books, you know, where you had your family and friends sign with a little verse. Did you keep any of those? I have all of them. Oh, fantastic. And the first one was given to me by, by my mother. And um, Special. Yes. She said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Uh -huh. You know, a biblical yes. interpretation. Yes. Then later on, there's one in there that stuck in my mind. It was... In your favorite chain of friendships, of golden friendships, please keep me as a golden link. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. Yes. And there are many, many more. Jean, your life at home, you were telling me there were deliveries to the house as oh, well yes. as the ice. Yes. We had milk delivery at home and bread delivery. And the um, bread deliverer was Percy Stevens. And I think that the milk was Huntsville Dairy. I bet it was. Yeah. That was great, you know. Where would the bread have come from? Do you know? Um, I think it was Brown's bread, but I'm not certain. And did they bring other things, treats too, um, or just bread? Just bread. That's interesting. And we okay. had a lot of beggars at the door. They'd come in on, on the freight trains oh, yes. and then come straight up the hill and ask for food. Mm -hmm. or we don't get that now. No. 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 And we would go to Hamilton quite frequently, the family on the train and uh, do you remember enjoying that oh yes that was great because yeah. as I said we never had a car my father never mm -hmm. well he drove a team but he never drove a car <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a skill to drive the team yes yes not your own horse though someone else's team. no no we never kept a horse would it have been a Bethune lumber yes thing? Yes. Okay. Um, my father, after he came back from the war, the First World War, he um, and my mother settled here in 1919, which was about the end of the war. And they first lived in a brick bungalow down in the West End, just above the railroad station, okay. almost across from... Oh, that restaurant. Um, I can't think of the name of it. In the west end of Huntsville? Yes. Near, not, is that the west side fish and chips? Like, no, no, not that no, far. further down. Oh, further. Further okay. down. Okay. Like right above the railroad station. Oh, okay. Anyway. Um, so that's where they started out? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then moved up to, um, what's the name of it? 17 Dufferin. Dufferin. Dufferin Street. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, going to school was interesting because I had to walk from Dufferin Street to the public school, which was on the corner of Center and Caroline Street, oh, yes. the opposite corner to where it is now. And um, a lot of the children walked up Center Street, and on the corner was a blacksmith shop, Gerhardt and Fleming, and the children would just love to stop there to watch these horses being shooed. I and, can't imagine, right in town. Yeah. Lovely. The building is still there, but of course it's not what it was before. Mm -hmm. And um, the school itself was a combination public and high. 
like half. And, and the high school went to grade 13? That's correct. Wow. So and it was in the back part. Okay. And so when you graduated from public school, you walked through the door and you were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was quite something. Um, George Boyce was principal of the public school and not Mr. Bernath, Bernath, but somebody right after him was principal of the high school. So two principals in the same yes, school yes. because of the two parts. And also, um, I remember at some point, I don't know the reason, we spent a couple of years in the band hall, oh. the white building next, that was next door, and I never knew for years why it was called Band Hall, <laughs> but the Anglo-Canadian Band, that was their headquarters, and that's where they practiced, I guess. The very famous band. Yes. Did you listen to them? Did you hear them sometimes? Oh, they were wonderful. Yes, we would ha have um, band concerts, you know, because oh. the band had their own sort of hexagon-shaped uh, seating for them. So that was that that's that's house is still there, that hexagonal um, house? I don't believe it is. No. Okay. This was a special band stand. Yes, it then. was taken down. Okay. And that's also where Bill Litchfield had the beginnings of the Pioneer Village. Oh. Yes. I know you were involved with that. I was involved with Bill Litchfield and Maureen Hunt and um, Miss Demain. I can't think. Oh, of. would that be Marjorie? Marjorie Demain, okay. yes. Yes. You know, a lot of people were very enthusiastic about getting the village started. Well, you must have been because it was very successful. Yes. I still call it the village. <laughs> I do too, actually. Yeah. Yes. And uh, anyway, um, yeah, and we'd have field days when um, the whole school would march through town and also fair day to go over to that lo same location where the arena was, over where the Summit Center is now. Yes. And uh, Is that where your fair days? That's where the fair days were. Okay. Uh -huh. And sometimes the field days were actually at the school itself, where we did racing and high jumping and yeah. all that stuff. Oh, and I was yeah. on the ladies' hockey team, too. Ladies' hockey? Good for yes. you! <gasps> and I was treasurer of the Huntsville Ski Club. Uh -huh. Not for long, towards the end, but I still have my pin. In the book. When did you start skiing? Was that quite when I started you were young? When I was very young, and I still have the skis. Oh, okay. <laughs> here in the house? Yes. Oh, wonderful. And where did you ski? Um, well, mostly in our backyard, you yes. see, because there was quite a slope from yes. the reservoir hill down. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so did other kids come over and ski there yes, as well? Yes, we oh, had nice. quite a collection from the neighborhood. And where did everybody get their skis? Wardell's, as a rule. Uh -huh. Yes, they had quite a stock there. That was another thing. Around Christmas, we always went to Wardell's and went upstairs to talk to Santa Claus. Oh. And Lovely. I think it was Ernie Norris who was Santa. He used to work for the company otherwise. Was he yeah. was he a jolly Santa? Oh yes, oh. very much so. Oh. That's a lovely memory. It really is, you know, when you think about what a great childhood you had. Yes. And uh, of course M Muskoka is exceptional. There we are. I totally agree. When, um, yep. when I graduated from high school, I went to Hamilton 
to stay with my grandfather and my aunt because my grandmother had died when I was two. But I stayed with them and went to CBC, Canada Business College, and took pu oh, shorthand. Oh, can you still do shorthand? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't tried for a long time. But that's We're, what everybody learned, wasn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, shorthand. Yes. And then when you acquired a secretarial position, you um, took, like, the person dictated. That was it. The boss dictated, and you took the shorthand, and then you had to wear a machine on your head and transpose it into typing on the typewriter. Where, did you consider yourself fairly good at that after you graduated? Well, I didn't have any problems until I came back to Huntsville and um, the Muskoka Wood hired me for a few days for, you know, just odd secretarial work. But one of the Hutchison gentlemen asked me to take dictation in French. Oh! <gasps> that I was not capable of. <laughs> Did he ever find anyone who could? I don't know. <laughs> That's very unusual. It is. In Huntsville. Yeah, it is. Can you just tell me a little bit more about your school that you attended? How many floors was it? Um, Would it be a two-story two building? Two-story. As I recall, yes. And there were no elevators, it was stairs. Oh, yes. And the girls had to wear dark um, tunics, oh. white blouses, oh. and dark black stockings. Yes. Everybody. And where did you get those? Where did you buy them? Probably Wardell's or Eaton's. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Eaton's. That's too. right. Um, when you mentioned that, I don't know what made me think of it, but I worked at uh, Stedman's five cent to a dollar store. Oh, yes. And I worked at Bowie's Bakery on the bakery side, not the tea room. Okay. And I, the odd time I would work at the post office at Christmas because my father was postmaster. So what what would your jobs have been there? What would you have done oh, at the post very, office? Oh, very simple. Yeah, just sort of Joe jobs, nothing <laughs> important. But and did you get paid for that? A little bit. Uh huh. So a nice bit of cash then. Oh yes. Yeah. These jobs you mentioned were those all during high school years? Yes. yes. So you must have been very busy because you were also involved yes. in many activities. Very, yes. As well as at church. Oh. Um, there's something I was going to mention there about um, the jobs. Um, You'd also mentioned to me Ecclestones. Oh, yes, yes. They had um, a big, um, I don't know whether it was a fire, it was some kind of a calamity, and they had to reorganize their stock and I helped with that. You were very busy. Oh I was. And you know there were a number of very enthusiastic entrepreneurs in Huntsville. Mm. There was Lance Collins, the painter, okay. and I thought he was every bit as good as Tom Thompson but he didn't have anyone to promote him. And he was up at the end of the street there. He also um, did some shoe repair. And my husband and his two brothers were allowed to leave their bicycles there when they went to school because they lived way out in Stistet. Oh, that's a long way. It is. They had to bicycle in. Oh my goodness, that's a long trip. It is. But um, Mr. Collins was very, very kind. And they got to know him quite well. Then the second one was... Um, 
um, Fred Burns, who boarded at Trussler's, he made boots for the loggers with nails in the bottom so they would clasp onto the logs. Oh my goodness. And he was crippled, if I remember correctly. <sighs> but um, That's very specialized. Yes, and I have a pair of those boots. Oh. <laughs> Never used, but... You have some gems. Yeah. Yes, you do have. And there was a, a third person. Well, let's but, think oh, about main, the main I street. I think it was a lady. So we, we knew a Eaton's was on the main street. Yes. Wardell's down at the other end. Yes. Stedman's was here mm -hmm. then. There must have been some smaller shops along there as well. There were. Um... So was your shoemaker, your bootmaker along there? Fred? Mm -hmm. um, he was about where McElroy's Insurance is. Okay. And then Metcalf's Cigar Store was right next door, the other half of the store. Um, yeah, there were a lot of interesting places on Main Street. Were there any penny candy stores? Did you ever go and get penny candy on the way to or from school? Oh yes, there there was a Greek gentleman who used to make candy. My father just loved it. Oh. It was sort of a yellowish color and foamy. I can't oh. think what the name was. Anyway, yes, there were lots of um, interesting businesses in Kellogg's. Oh yes. They had their um, florist and gardening supplies, mm -hmm. and they apparently helped with this house. This house? This ha Well, oh. they did the landscape. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that another time. Yes, there's, there's been a yeah. lovely landscaping job done yeah. here. Absolutely. They did. I wish I could think of that other, that third name. There was probably a jewelry store too, was there? Yes. There are usually uh, jewelers. Briggs. Oh, Briggs. Yes. Harold and, you know, Hattie's father, Harold. Yes. Hattie was just a neighbor down here of mine. She was also the first matron of the Order of the Eastern Star in Huntsville. Oh, yes. And I'm the, the only remaining charter member surviving. Mm -hmm. You've been a member of many organizations. Yes. Tell me a tiny bit more about summertime and what people did when they had two whole months off school in the summer. Well, a lot of people gardened, you know, or... Did you help with that at home? Not really, no. It wasn't my thing. <laughs> And, um, of course, a lot canoed because of, there's so much water around. Yes. And had friends visit. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I think originally when the pioneers first came, they, their hope was gardening, you know, to a great extent. Yes. But it wasn't long before they realized there was too much rock. Yes. And so eventually then it moved into logging and lumbering. Yes. And there were many of those companies, were Oh, absolutely, there. Yes, yes. Quite a number. And um, then over the years they started um, shutting down. Mm -hmm. And it became a tourist haven or target. Still is, isn't it? A lot it? of um, resorts and summer cabins. And, yep. and at one point we had quite a native population here. Oh. But I can't think of the chief's name. Wh where were they? Were they settled here? Or were they more... They weren't right in town. Okay. But they were close by. Mm-hmm. Yes. Did, did any of their children attend your school? Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. 
And of course the tannery was always a big thing in the town. It was probably a big employer, was it? Oh, it was, yes, absolutely. And, uh, of course, in those days, the post office was in the town hall and on the main floor, and the jail was in the basement where Club 55 is now. <laughs> but if you were in a lineup at the wicket waiting to get to uh, buy stamps or anything, you could always tell when there was someone there that worked at the tent. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Also, it was not unusual to see a piece of hide or a log floating down the river. Oh my goodness. It was just yes. one of those things. Yes, it was the industry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I bet some of your schoolmates had parents that probably worked there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like my husband's father worked there after he left the mill, or the mill um, closed down. Yes. He went to the tannery. Right. Uh -huh. um, now, in fact, they were living in a tannery house. The tannery owned a number of houses for their employees. And where were those? Um, his was on... Um, like, were they close to the tannery? No, they were up here on the hill. Oh! Um, Duncan okay. Street. Duncan oh, Street. oh my goodness. Uh -huh. There were a couple of them on Center Street, weren't yes. there? Yes. But, but as far up as Duncan? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would C.O. Shaw have had those houses built? Absolutely, then? yes. I see. He not only bought houses, but he would buy them uniforms. And in a lot of cases, he bought them instruments to play in the band. Of course, oh. that was one of the requisites of him bringing them over from Europe, was that they played an instrument. He wanted musical so talent. So that he could get his orchestra, his band, organized. It was famous, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. They went to the one in Toronto, to the Maybe. exhibition. Oh, yes. In Toronto. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, to me, Huntsville and Muskoka more particularly, it can be described in three words. Water, rock, and trees. Oh, yes. And that's God's country. Oh, beautiful. As my father, they called him SR, would say. <laughs> that is beautiful. Thank you. Let's end this for today on that lovely note. Okay. Thank you.